What's up guys, thank you for joining me for this video. Uh, we are talking about type nines and we are in kind of part two of, of uh, this little section here out of Beatrice Chestnut and Paez's book on uh, the key patterns of type nines. And she mentions that nines tend to neglect what is important to themselves and sometimes they have a difficult time mobilizing their energy on their own behalf. And so uh, in the last video, if you haven't watched that, um, check it out. Um, but in this video, we're going to continue this discussion and see what else you know comes to our mind. So she says here that uh, nines have a tendency to have a difficult time knowing their own priorities and then following those priorities in life. So what is it I'm supposed to be doing? Think of it as like your internal compass that wakes you up and says, hey, get excited about this thing. It needs to get done today. Move forward, get it done, accomplish this. And that could be a little fuzzy sometimes for nines. Uh, you know, some missing files there. And if you haven't watched my type nines and missing files, I get a lot of comments on that video uh, where nines, it seems like there might be a couple of files down there that I'm supposed to have that other people have that tells them what to do every day. And those seem to be missing for me. So that's what she's talking about. Um, and you know, what's gonna happen? What does everybody say about nines? They love their routines. They get lost in their routines. Well, what is that? That's doing stuff when you don't know what to do, or you have a hard time processing what really needs to be done in your life, or maybe you just avoid it. You just stubbornly decide, I'm not calling AT&T and getting that phone bill changed. I'm just sick and tired of talking to them and they were going to email me and they didn't. And I want my wife to take care of this. So I'm just digging my heels in. I'm not doing it. What are you going to do then? Watch you do other things while avoiding what needs to be done. And I think this is that old idea, you know, that nines tend to get stuck and lost in their routines. Um, while neglecting the things in front of them that they most need to pay attention to. So let's just pause for a second. Let's just pause for a second. Let's make this video about you. What do you need to be doing right now? Maybe you are watching these videos because it's easier than doing what needs to be done. Do not use me to avoid life, okay? Let me be somebody who inspires you to engage in life. If you are putting off calling your mother and apologizing and making things right with her and you're watching these videos instead, please stop this video. Just pause it. Come back to it later. But pause this video and call your mom. Don't put off what needs to be done in your life. Just hoping that eventually it'll take care of itself. The universe will eventually make it all work out. Do not narcotize yourself on videos and food and video games and books and music and art and painting and organizing closets. Do not narcotize yourself away from life. Let videos like this shake you and rattle you a little bit and say, do you know what you need to be doing right now? Could you take out, for example, look at my desk. I am a seven. I am not a one. I am not a six. I am not naturally the kind of person that likes schedules and to-do lists and putting all kinds of responsible things, adult things on my calendar. That's not who I am in my sevenness. But look at me making myself write it down on paper. I need to get this done. I need to get this done. And then prioritizing these things. And I'm just telling you from somebody who's not a, a one, not a six, and I don't know whatever other types might be like that, threes, it doesn't come natural to me. And I don't think it comes natural to a lot of nines. Now, that being said, I've met a lot of nines who have three or four beautiful calendars that they've made 
put together, bought, and they've got beautiful little unicorn stickers in them and rainbows all over them, and they've got all kinds of bedazzles all over them. And it's like, okay, but are you actually using that calendar? Here's the secret with a calendar. You need to use it. That's the secret. Whether it's online, whether it's on your phone, or whether it's an old-fashioned calendar on a wall, you got to use it. You got to put down what you want to do. You've got to you've got to look at it every day. You've got to prioritize what needs to be done in your life. And really you're asking that one question. You got this one wing right next to you that says, "Hey, nine, is this really what you need to be working on right now? Why don't you take a second and and comply. Notice nines are withdrawn, ones are compliant. Comply your energy with the environment around you. And what is your environment telling you needs to be done right now? Go do that thing. Won't you feel better once it's done? Of course you will. In other words, if your motivation is truly peace, wouldn't you have a lot more peace when that AT&T bill is straightened out? Wouldn't your life be more peaceful when mom and dad and you are all connected again? Wouldn't your life be more peaceful when your book report is finished and you don't have that hanging over you, you know, for the next three weeks? It's done. Wouldn't that protect your peace? Make your long-term peace the priority. Instead of your short-term peace or peacekeeping, Make long-term peace your priority and then do what it takes to have financial peace, for example. Do what it takes to have relational peace. Do what it takes to have peace in your life. One of the things it's going to take to have peace in your life is you're going to have to lean on that eight and tell people, no, no, I'm sorry. I can't help you move your boxes this weekend. And that feels terrible to say that to somebody that's looking at you. Please, please, please. It's hard to tell people no. But if you don't tell them no, I guarantee something, you will not have peace in your life. You won't. Not when you're at everyone's beck and call. That's not peace. I don't know what it is, but it's not peace. You got to be able to tell people no. It's hard to tell people no when you don't have a clear yes for what you actually want to do. So you want to work on developing this. Really what you want to work on is I want to work I want to turn around and I want to fight that dragon of sloth. That slothy dragon that keeps me from hearing my own agenda. That keeps me from hearing what my yes is and what my no is. And if you don't know, just start practicing no. Just start practicing saying no to everything. And see how uncomfortable it makes you, how awkward it makes you, but how empowering it is. Just start saying no to everything. And what's awesome is a lot of times as you're saying no to stuff, you'll kind of hear your own real yes Somebody says, you want to go to Taco Bell? No, I don't want to go to Taco Bell. Otherwise, you would have said, sure, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Start saying no to things. And then when something comes up that you really want to do, hey, you want to go to Tropical Smoothie and get a uh, Chia Banana Boost Smoothie? No. Wait. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, actually, I do want to do that. I really do want to do that. And great. I will applaud you and say you heard yourself. You fought the dragon of sloth and you heard yourself. I'm so proud of you. And if, if you live with a nine, try not to be upset with them or to over-talk them when they do hear their own voice. When they are communicating their preferences or their wants, try to pay attention to that and really try to listen to that. That's what we want to applaud and that's what we want to appreciate is when they hear their own voices and then they communicate that, that out loud. That's a wonderful thing, even if you don't agree with them. Just say, wow, I'm so glad you were able to say that. I'm so glad that you shared that with me. Thank you for letting me know how you feel about this. And then you can you can disagree with them, but applaud the nine for, for digging in and figuring out what they want and then for having the courage to say it out loud. And if you're not a nine, that hardly makes sense to you, unless maybe you're a two. You know, you're probably not going to understand that. Like, I should I should appreciate them for that. Doesn't everybody do this? Well, some of us struggle with these kinds of things. Okay, let's see what else she says. Uh, she says, notice if it can be hard for you to assert yourself. <laughs> some nines are more assertive than others, but by and large, you know, it can be difficult for most nines to assert. They feel like you feel like you're being aggressive. And I think it's just a good reminder here at this point to say assertive is good, is a good thing. It's the positive side. 
Aggressive is the negative side. Assertive means you're taking ownership of what is yours. You're owning your own space. You're owning your own yard. And life is better for you and for everybody around you when you assert your own space. Aggressive is when you try to step in someone else's yard and control their space. You try to control what they can and can't do. And this is where we get into conflicts with people. And I think sometimes as nines, this line is a little blurry for you guys, as it is for all of us at times. Um, is you feel like you're being aggressive when really you're just being assertive. And being assertive is good. And actually, you know what, Nines? I bet you a dollar. I bet you anything that you appreciate assertive people in your life. I bet you probably appreciate the three or four assertive people in your own life. Somebody who walks up to you and says, Hey, Sherry, I need you to get this floor done. And then I need you to move on and finish straightening out these cabinets. All right, I'll be back at noon to see how you're doing. That clear, assertive instruction provides you with a clear set of expectations so that you know what to do in order to not mess up. You know how to make this other person happy. You know what your job is. And I bet you anything, you appreciate it when people can be assertive without being aggressive. Yet notice if you struggle yourself in being assertive when you need to be. Notice if you struggle yourself, if you have to look at somebody and give them clear instructions. As much as you appreciate clear instructions, I bet you, you have a difficult time giving clear instructions. You might have a hard time saying, Sherry, I need you to clean this floor. You might say something more like, hey, Sherry, how's it going? How's work going? Um, great. And think that you left giving clear instructions but the other person did not hear clear instructions. They heard very 